All right, so we got a horse. Um, horse looks like cave art. Uh, horse is going to pull a cart. No. It's a leg stick. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, there's a, I don't know how horse legs look. I'm not really around horses as often as I maybe should be. Um, there you go. It's <laughs> well, we all have an obligation to, to get acquainted with, with the Earth's creatures and blah, blah, blah. All right, so anyway, so we've got this, this horse. I want to draw the free body diagram that I might associate with this horse cart system because any uh, grouping of masses that are somehow linked together, uh, we call a system. I would say that this, this cart is being pulled forward by a horse, wouldn't you? And if that's the case, then I would say that there's a force of the horse on the cart. I love saying force and horse so much together. Um, I would also say that there's a force of gravity acting on the cart. Notice that the C is second in both of these. There's also the force normal acting on the cart, the normal force acting on the cart. And if you really wanted to get down into it, there, there might be some sort of a friction force, kinetic friction force acting back on this cart. Now people say, is it because the wheels are dragging on the ground? Well, not really. I mean, saying that there's friction in a cart scenario like this, you have to maybe be more clear about where the friction is present. In this case, the, the friction isn't between the surface of the wheel and the ground, although there, there may be some static friction there that allows traction to occur. The kinetic friction that's actually slowing the cart down is in the, the axle itself, where the axle rubs against whatever holds the axle against the cart. So that's really where the friction is. People get confused about that. Somehow they think that it's like dragging an object. Not really. The friction is happening right in there. Okay, So it's, that's why you oil your axles. You don't oil the rim of your wheel, otherwise you'd slip. Anyway, so you might have some friction force. With respect to the horse, though, we've got force of gravity acting on the horse. We've got force normal acting on the horse. Uh, what's a force that could be pulling back on the horse? The cart. The cart, yeah. So that's the action-reaction force pair to this guy right here. Force of force on cart. I've got force of cart acting back on the horse. They all should have vector hats, I'm just, just emphasizing. Um, what's actually pushing the horse forward, though? The ground. Yeah, and we'll call it the earth again, just so we don't get confused about Gs. So force of the, ho uh, the, sorry, the earth acting on the horse would drive the, the horse forward. And really, we're talking about some traction that's happening um, at the, the hooves of the horse as the horse pushes back on the earth, the earth returns by pushing forward on the horse. It's an action-reaction force pair. Now, somebody in my other class wanted to say, oh, shouldn't there be a force of the earth acting on the cart, too? And I said, no. Does anybody know why there wouldn't be a force of the earth acting on the cart? What would have to be true about the cart itself if I was going to claim that there was a force of the earth acting on the cart? Yeah. Yeah, you'd ha this would have to be a motorized cart, uh, some sort of a horseless carriage, if you will. Okay. Um, which is what cars are, which is what put the horses out of business, right? So if this cart was able to drive itself by somehow having some spinning wheels that, that drove it forward, I might be able to say that there was the force of the earth pushing the cart forward also, but that would render the horse useless, right? Like, I mean, this, this cart is getting moved forward by horsepower, um, not by something internal. You know, people still use horsepower in all their calculations, right? You've seen the horse, how many, it's like a 500,000 horsepower is uh, how, how powerful one of these rockets is that goes up to, to the moon or whatever. Um, they talk about trains being measured in horsepower. And really, we'd be ta talking about how much power, you know, um, in measured in, maybe we might convert it to watts. And I really think they should convert it to watts. We should talk more in terms of watts because nobody's really going to go back and hook up horses to the rockets, right? Like, you're not, you're not going to the moon using 100,000 horses. Like, if you do, I'd be impressed, but it's not going back that way. So we might as well just move forward and use watts. But in this course, we're only going to use newtons and watts. We're not going to use horsepower because we're not going back to the horse. Sorry, honey. 